want we want to finish 12.4 and here we want to find the tangential and the normal components of acceleration that is to find a sub t and a sub n where do they fit in the scheme of things the acceleration is said to have this formula that the acceleration is a sub t times the tangent vector plus a sub n times the normal vector. We seek to find a sub t, the tangential component of acceleration, and then also the centripetal force or the normal component of acceleration, a sub n. So to do that, we have to find basically everything. We have to find um, R prime, we have to find the norm of R prime, we find then the tangent vector, then from there we find the normal vector, then after that we find the acceleration, and then we take the dot product of the acceleration and the tangent to find A sub t, right? A sub t is the, the dot product of the acceleration vector with the tangent vector, and then a sub n is the dot product of the acceleration with the normal vector. So let's begin. So first we find r prime of t. We have i plus 2j minus 3k. Now we find its norm. the square root of the 1 squared plus the 2 squared plus the negative 3 squared. So we get the square root of 9 plus 1, 10 plus 4, the square root of 14. So from there we can find the tangent vector. Remember the tangent vector is r prime of t divided by its norm. So we have r prime divided by the square root of 14, so that's 1 over the square root of 14i plus 2 over the square root of 14j minus three over the square root of 14 K. Okay. So when we take the derivative of this guy, well obviously that just gives us zero. So there is no normal vector. since t prime of t is equal to zero. Well, that's no fun. Let me back up and do the previous problem. <laughs> I will not give you one like that on the test because that's a dud, right? Well, uh, what can we uh, find uh, from this guy? Well, let's uh, look at here, you have r prime and Notice that when you find the acceleration, or double prime of t, it also comes out to be zero, working on this r prime there and r double prime. And so, we 
not much here. If I ask the question, why doesn't this guy have um, acceleration or uh, uh, the so-called uh, uh, normal vector is a constant velocity, exactly. R of t is a plane, but its derivative is, is just a number. And so obviously, its second derivative, the acceleration, is 0, right? So yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because you take the derivative of a constant and you get 0. Yes, sir. Yep. So let's look at something with some curvature. and. So we're back up here. Oh, let me finish that. Not much here. R of t is a plane. Where its derivative is a constant. For some reason, I forget where I was. It was somewhere yesterday. Well, I had gotten to church early yesterday, and it, it looked to me that I was working that problem out, and there was seemed to be something more. I don't know if it was that problem or some other problem, but it seemed to have, at that time, more meat on it. This morning, it's kind of skimpy. So um, uh, the problem that uh, you will have on the test and I try to make it easy, um, will look like this guy. And i leave that in just a minute for you to do. But let's look at this one. So we're going to rewrite R of t. And just say it's ti plus t to the negative 1 times j. And here we find its derivative. So this is i minus t to the negative 2 j, or just i minus 1 over t squared j. We find the norm of r prime of t. So that's the square root of 1 plus 1 over t squared to be squared. So this is the square root of 1 plus 1 over t to the fourth. And this is the square root of t to the fourth plus 1 all over t squared. Are you with me? that? Are you with me? You're looking like you need my glasses. What happens when you add 1 plus 1 over t to the fourth? What do you get there? t to the fourth plus 1 over t to the fourth? And what's the square root of t to the fourth downstairs? t to the second. Just adding fractions, right? So the tangent vector is r prime of t all over the norm of r prime of t. So r prime was this This i minus 1 over t squared times j. So we're going to divide that by this square root of t to the fourth plus 1 over t squared. So when you do that, you have t to the second over the square root of t to the fourth plus 1i minus 1 over 
the square root of t to the fourth plus one j. There you want to employ complex fractions, right? A over B divided by uh, C over D becomes A over B times D over C. Right? So that bottom fraction, basically, you're just flipping. And so you simplify. This is what we have. Now take the derivative of this. Let's just write it t squared over the square root of t to the fourth plus 1 i. Let's write this as minus t to the fourth plus 1 raised to the negative 1 half power j. That would be easier on us for the derivative on that, that jth part. So t prime is a lot of stuff. So this ith component, we uh, use the quotient rule. So it's the derivative of the numerator, which is 2t, times our denominator minus our numerator times the derivative of our denominator. So that's a 1 half times t to the fourth plus 1. The 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half use the, the power or the chain rule times the derivative of the inside, that's 4t to the third. And this is all times i. And that's all over our denominator squared. That's just t to the fourth plus 1. Then minus, look at the jth part, that derivative becomes uh, uh, the, the negative t to the fourth plus one to the negative one half, and so this is times the negative one half. So just put a plus there, one half times t to the fourth plus one to the negative one half minus one, and that becomes negative three half times the derivative of the inside, four t to the third times j. Now we just simplify. Simplify sounds like Superfly. I think there's a new movie coming out, Superfly. I don't know if you all saw the. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes. We went to the movies last week and they had a preview. I don't know when it's coming out. Maybe sometime this summer. Uh, but I hope it's good. I, I we saw the previews. They got some young cat playing Superfly. And um, I don't know if he's going to be as cool enough as, as the original <laughs> Superfly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, of, of the old movie. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 man. So but anyway, uh, we're going to simplify. 1973, okay, Superfly. <laughs> That's back in your day. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, okay, okay, let's forget Superfly. Okay, simplify, that's the word. I said the wrong word. I get somebody excited, man. So anyway, we have uh, 2t times the square root of 2 to the fourth plus 1 minus, that's 1 half times a 4, so that's a 2t to the fifth. 2t to the fifth over that radical, that's the square root, t to the fourth plus 1, and that's all over t to the fourth plus 1, i, plus 1 half times a 4 is 2t to the third over t to the fourth plus 1 to the positive 3 half power times j. See, let's get a line of demarcation. Separation. Okay. 
So now t prime of t is equal to, we're going to add these two fractions, this guy plus this, or this, you know, plus a negative, that guy right there. And this denominator here is over 1. So I'm going to multiply to the numerator and its denominator, that square root of uh, t to the 4th plus 1. So this is 2t times t to the 4th plus 1 minus 2t to the 5th all over the square root of t to the 4th plus 1 times t to the 4th plus 1 becomes t to the 4th plus 1, the 3 half power. I think I can do that with my algebra in a class called Calculus 3. I think I can do that. <laughs> what do you say about that, Brother Lewis? <laughs> oh, boy. We're in trouble. <laughs> okay, so this is 2 times t to the 3rd over t to the 4th plus 1 to the 3 half times j. The good thing about that is if you do it right, two things are supposed to happen. One, both denominators will be the same, typically something to the 3 half power. And then the second thing that you will notice that if everything is done right, when we multiply this 2t times that t to the fourth, that term there will always cancel out with that. There is like a known formula for this t prime based on the values of x, y, and z formula is so long, I can't even even try to memorize it, so I just work the problem. Yes, sir? Yes, sir. What I did was we multiplied this uh, numerator times the square root of t to the fourth plus one, and then divided by the square root of t to the fourth plus one. Okay? Yes, sir. So that square root times the square root just give us the whole t to the fourth plus one in our numerator. Right? Then minus, uh, when both denominators are the same, we combine the numerators. Minus two times t to the fifth, all over the common denominator. Right? As the square root of t to the fourth plus one times t to the fourth plus one, you get t to the fourth plus one. Really, it's times it's c to the 4 plus 1 times the square root of c to the 4 plus 1, which is c to the 4 plus 1 to the 3 half power. Where? Right here? Right here? Right here? No. It's a whole. No, you multiply this times this, you get t to the 4 plus 1 to 3 half. What's 1 plus a half? 3 half, right? Okay, let's, let's, let's move on. Yes, sir. How would you combine, how would you add one half plus um, uh, two thirds? Same way. Now, this is t prime of t is equal to, this is two times t times t to the fourth would cancel out with this minus two times t to the fifth. So what I have left is two t over t to the fourth plus one to the three half i plus two t to the third over t to the fourth, yes, plus one to the three half j. Now we take its norm. This is the square root. When you do that norm, that denominator, 
it stays the same. Basically, you're going to square the denominator and then take the square root of it, and so it stays the same after you finish. So basically, all you're doing is taking the square of the numerator plus the square of this numerator all over the common denominator. Yes, sir? Yes. Yes. Because remember, remember here the square root for the norm, you take the square of it, then you take the square root of it, right? Right? So I'm raising to the second power, but then I'm raising that second power to the one half power. So two times a half is still one. Right? Because you can do that with fractions because the denominators are the same, common denominator. Right? That's, if they were different, you couldn't do that. Yes, sir. So this becomes that 4t squared, this guy right here, plus 4t power raised to a power, you multiply, 3 times 2 is 6, all over the common denominator, which is t to the 4th plus 1 to the 3 half power. Now, the numerator, I can factor out a 2 and also a t. Basically, you factor 4t squared, take the square root of that, you get 2t times the square root of 1 plus t to the fourth. That denominator is 1 plus t to the fourth times the square root of 1 plus t to the fourth. So this norm is 2t all over 1 plus t to the fourth. So now we find the normal vector, which is t prime of t over the norm of t prime of t. So t prime is here. And the norm of t prime is there. So we just write it out. So this is 2t over t to the fourth plus 1 to the 3 half power. And that's divided by 2t over 1 plus t to the fourth i plus 2t to the third over t to the fourth plus 1 to 3 half power divided by 2t over 1 plus t to the fourth j. So this normal vector, this is 2t over this radical we could flip this division to multiplication, so we can write it as this is 2t over, I don't want you to see it, 1 plus t to the fourth times the square root of 1 plus t to the fourth times 1 plus t to the fourth over 2t i plus 2t to the third over 1 plus t to the fourth times the square root of 1 plus t to the fourth times 1 plus t to the fourth over 2t j. Like I said, it, it helps you with your algebra skills. So this term and that term cancels out. This guy in that term cancels out. So the normal vector is 2t over the square root of 1 plus t to the fourth i plus 2t to the third over 1 plus t to the fourth, the square root of that, times j. Oh, yeah. 2t cancels out, so we have, yeah, I didn't see that. 2t cancels out there and there, so that's just a 1 there. Thank you.
on the other side too. That's right. This is one. So that guy cancels out. We have left here a t to the second. Very good. So now we need to find this guy at what's the number? T is equal to one. So we find n of one. This is one over the square root of two i plus one over the square root of two j. Now we need to, to write the tangent vector the same. T of one, C T was ooh. this guy right here. If I plug in a one for T, that's one over the square root of two I minus one over the square root of two, right? If t is 1, you, you, you raise 1 to the 4th, it's still 1. That's just 1 plus 1, so we get the square root of 2. So this guy is 1 over the square root of 2i minus 1 over the square root of 2j. Now we need the acceleration, and then we can find a sub t and also a sub n. Now something to note here that the normal vector and the tangent vector or orthogonal, that is, they're perpendicular. So if you take their dot products, you're supposed to get zero. And, and looking at those two, you see that. So we just note that. That's something that you can note to make sure you're on the right track. So you can check the dot product of the normal, the tangent vector, one over the square root of two i plus one over the square root of two j times 1 over the square root of 2 i minus 1 over the square root of 2 j. So that gives us 1 half minus 1 half. We get 0. So we need to find the acceleration. We need to, to have r prime. What was r prime? r prime was i minus t to the negative 2j. Is that right? Did I copy that right? I minus t to the negative 2j, yes. So this implies that r double prime is equal to, well, the derivative of 1 here is 0. So this is 2 times t to the negative 3j. So I need him. That's R double prime, excuse me. That's R prime, R double prime. So the acceleration is two times T to the negative three J. And the acceleration evaluated at one is two J. So now let's find a sub, a sub t. This is the dot product of the acceleration here at 1 times t evaluated at 1. So this is 2j dot with the tangent 
that was 1 over the square root of 2 i minus 1 over the square root of 2 j. Well, the, the ith component for the acceleration is 0. So 0 times this 1 over the square root of 2 is 0. So all we have left is 2 times this negative 1 over the square root of 2. So this is just negative 2 over the square root of 2. Remember that the components are scalars and not vectors, so there's no i or j uh, associated uh, with these terms a sub t and a sub n. So a sub n is the dot product here at 1 with the acceleration with the normal vector at 1. So this is 2j dot with the, uh, the normal vector. That's 1 over the square root of 2i plus 1 over the square root of 2j. And that just gives us, two, gives us 2 times 1 over the square root of 2, or positive 2 over the square root of 2. It's a lot going on. But you know, a problem like this is almost like going to the gym, you know? You just start working all those muscles that you didn't even know you had. <laughs> you know, really good workout, man, I tell you. So, uh, but I like to go swimming. Because, <laughs> you know, swimming, you're exercising, but you're having fun. <laughs> and it's, man, this is good stuff. Hmm? I swim okay. Yeah, I swim okay. <laughs> what are you trying to say? But anyway, uh, <laughs> well, I'm being recorded, so I can't talk my stuff. But uh, look, work this problem right here. <laughs> Let's see what you can do with that guy. <laughs>